Hello everyone. So today we're going to be looking at section, well, we're going to start chapter seven. Um, in particular, we'll be talking about the unit circle, sine and cosine function. However, um, before we dive into the unit circle, sine and cosine, we want to do a quick refresher on angles. So note that if you have an angle, um, the side that you start drawing the angle is what we refer to as the initial side. And the end side of the angle is what we call the terminal side. And um, we usually note this little arc to represent where the angle is. And to name the angle, um, we would call this angle AOB, where the angle O would be in the middle. So you may have positive angles as well as negative angles. If the angle is positive, um, then we're going in a counterclockwise position. If the angle is negative, then we're going to be going in a clockwise position. An angle is said to be in standard form. This is very important. If its initial side coincides with the x-axis. So for instance, if this was the x-axis, then we would say that this angle is in standard position. Um, we want to also note that you guys may be familiar with the angle measures in degrees, but we're going to learn a little bit more that angles can be measured in both degrees and radians. So that's still a little bit of practice uh, graphing angles or drawing angles. So I'm going to draw the 90 degree angle. And you guys should be familiar with a 90 degree angle being a perpendicular um, angle. So this would be our 90 degree angle. Um, your 180. You know that angles on the straight line measure 180. So it would be that angle. Um, your 360, so we know that a complete rotation is 360 degrees. So that would be my angle. Now let's look at angle 30 for a minute. How do I estimate angle 30? Well, it's going to be between zero and 90 for sure. This would be about, in the middle here, this would be about 45 degrees. So 30 would be a little bit below. And so that would be an estimate for um, or a 30 degree angle. Notice here, negative uh, 90. So recall that we said, if we were doing negative angles, we go clockwise. So if we want to do negative 90, we would come here, and this would be negative 90 degrees. <clears throat> OK. Now, what about if we wanted to draw 120 degrees? So um, we usually use the one the degrees that we know uh, to draw the angles that we're looking for. So we know that this is going to be 90, right? And we know that 90 plus 30 roughly would give us 180. Um, I'm sorry, 120. So we know that, again, this is like midway. So an additional 30 on top of the 90 would give me 120, which is about here. So this angle is about 120 degrees. Now, if we are trying to graph or draw a 450 degree angle, note that um, this surpasses the 360 rotation. So here we are the first rotation 360. 
that will give us a complete rotation. But the angle that we are looking for is 450 degrees. So you would think to yourself, hmm, how can I figure out where this angle will end? Well, <clears throat> since we know what 360 degrees or where it would end up, uh, we just need to know how many additional degrees do we need to get 450. So to do that, you would do, let's say, 450 minus 360, because that's already here. So we need to know how much further do we need to go. Well, this is 90. So that means I need to go another 90 degrees. And then I will be at 450 degrees. Now, we're looking for negative 270. We could use the same idea, being that we know where 180 degree ends. So here is it. And we're going downwards because it's a negative angle. So we know where 180 degree ends. So we need to figure out now how many more degrees do I need to go to get to 270? Well, I can do 270 minus 90. Um, sorry, not 90, 180, and kind of guessed it, that will be 90. So we need to go another 90 degrees, and we'll get to 270, negative 270 degrees. Okay, so what I want to point out here, notice that 450 degrees and 200, negative 270 share the same position here where they end. So since they share the same position where they end, we call this coterminal angle. Remember the terminal angle or the terminal side of your angle is where you finish drawing your angle. So that's hence the name coterminal. So if you have two angles that end at the same point, they're called coterminal angles. So let's say we were tasked with finding coterminal angles between 0 and 360 degrees for each of these. So let me first um, go about drawing my 420 degrees. So I think we already did this. Um, this would be 360. Again, we would do 420 minus 360. And you would see that this is uh, going to be an additional 60. Um, 45 is here, so 60 would be a little bit above that. So here we are. But notice, um, so this whole angle here is 420. But the this angle, This little angle here is actually 60. So you would say that 60 and 430, 420 are coterminal angles. Okay. What about negative 600? very similar. Um, I'm going the opposite direction, so I'm going here. So that's going to be um, negative 360. So 600 minus 360 is going to give me 240. So that means I have to go another 240. Um, we know that this is going to be 180, and I think another 90 degrees will give us 240. So I will end here. So actually, so this is negative 600. But if I were to just do one rotation in that direction, so if I were to just go here, this little angle here is negative 240. So we can just say that 
negative 240 and negative 600 are coterminal angles. You could also say 90 degrees since it ends at a 90. Um, 90 degrees and negative 600 are coterminal angles. Actually, let's say 90 since it says between 0 and 360. Oops. Okay. All right, so now we're going to look at the, the um, notion of radians. So previously I said that degrees are measured in radians and I'm sorry angles are measured in radians and degrees so let's look at what this whole idea of radians um, is all about so when we talk about radians you guys recall or should recall radius or radii and so these are really a radian is really a measure of your radius so we're going from the center to the edge of the circle um, and so we can measure a ton of radian um, around the circle. So a complete rotation, as we recall, is going to be 360 degrees. Um, and so uh, when we talk about um, a notion of arc length, we're talking about a portion of the entire circle or the entire circumference of the circle. Now, when we um, look here, we will see that we can label this as theta. Theta is um, a Greek term that we use to label our angles. And so, we can see that here theta would be equal to one radian based on what this diagram is saying. But how do we know this? Well, um, the length of an arc um, S is equal to theta times r and sometimes we would solve this to find what r is or in this case we want to figure out theta since we're saying theta is one radian so we would solve this and we'd say oh theta equals s divided by r so if ever given um the angle of a circle, inscribed in a circle, and you're asked to find um, one of these missing pieces, this formula would be able to help you to do so. So in this instance, um, S is your arc length. But notice that um, your arc length here, which is a portion of your circle, in this instance is r. So really, this formula that we have is r divided by r. And so we see that equals um, theta. And so r divided by r is 1. So 1 radian is equal to theta. All right, so um, let's look at some more examples. So if we were to, let's say, look at the entire circle. So the entire circle has a circumference around it. And so um, our circumference of a circle, or let's just say C. C is equal to 2 pi r, okay? Um, and also recall that since uh, we're talking, when we talk about arc length, we're talking about um, a portion of 
the entire circle around, then the entire circle is the arc length of 2 pi r. Now, we know that if we were to do a complete rotation, that this would be 360 degrees. So basically, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi r, right? Or we'll say 2 pi radians. Okay, <clears throat> and so using this, we can derive how to go from um, degrees to radians or from radians to degrees. So first, let's say we have 360 degrees. Um, we say that equals to two pi r, right? If we were to divide both sides by two, so it's two pi radians. <clears throat> If we were to divide both sides by two, we would get that 180 is equal to pi radians. But that's not what we want. <laughs> we want one radian, so let's divide by pi. Right, so if we divide both sides by pi, we would get that Oh, we'll divide by 2 pi, sorry. So if we divide both sides by 2 pi, there we go. So this would cancel and you get 1. There we go. And then we have 180 divided by pi would be equal to 1 radian. So what that means is to go from radian to degrees, we would multiply by 180 divided by pi. We can always come back to the same formula of 360 is equal to 2 pi radians. So here, if we divided both sides by 360, so we'll have 1 degrees is equal to pi over 180 radians. So what that means is if I want to convert degrees to radians, I would multiply by pi over 180. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, um, just reiterating what was just stated. Okay, so let's look at a few examples. So let's say we have a, a circle with an angle inscribed and we wanna find the radian measure of each angle. Okay, so recall theta equals S divided by R. In this instance, we have alpha. So alpha equals S divided by R. Alpha, again, is another Greek term that we use. So we usually use Greek terms to name our angles. Now, um, S is my arc length, which is 4. R is my radius, which is 2. So for that reason, my angle measure in radian is 2 pi. I'm sorry, 2 r. Okay, now um, here we have uh, that a 90 degree angle is inscribed and we want to write this in radian measure. Well, we don't really even have to use the theta equals SR formula because if you notice, um, 90 degrees is one fourth. So 90 degrees out of 360. That's going to be one fourth. So 90 degrees is one fourth of the circle. 
And we know that the whole complete circle is 2 pi. So we could do 1 fourth of 2 pi. And that's going to give us pi over 2 radians. OK, so now let's say we want to convert 120 degrees to radians. So recall that to go from degrees to radians, we would multiply by pi over 180. So we'll just do 120 degrees times pi over 180. Those would cancel. And if we use 6, uh, this would be 2 pi over 3. So 120 degrees is 2 pi over 3 radians. What if we wanted to go the other way? In other words, we are trying to go um, from radians to degrees. So remember, to go from radians to degrees, we multiply by 180 over pi. So here we have um, pi over 3. Multiply that by 180 over pi. And what I always use as a rule of thumb to help me remember is that the pi's should cancel out when I'm going to degrees. And so then this would be, you can cancel here. This would be 60 degrees. If I'm doing one radian, then this would be um, one times um, one eighty over pi. This looks a little bit tricky, but we know that one radian is equal to one eighty over pi degrees, and you can also like get a numeric value for this. So this would be roughly 57.3 degrees. So it's pretty straightforward how to go from um, degrees to radian and radian to degrees. Now we have a, before I move on um, here, what I want to look at is that we have a, um, we have like a set of, um, what do you call it, angles that are standard that we keep in mind when it comes to uh, the unit circle. And so sometimes, well, not sometimes, but for this class, you're going to be required to find the um, to find the radians and degrees, or actually you're going to re be required to know them. Of course, you can always use your formula or you can just study it so that you don't forget it. Okay, so let me kind of just throw this on the screen for us. All right, so here are our values that are very important to us. So we like, um, this would be zero degrees if you start. 
Then you have 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, 135, 150, 180, and so on and so forth. If you notice on the outside, you have, let's say, pi over 2 pi, pi over 2, I'm sorry, five, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, and so forth. So basically what we have here, if we were to convert from degrees to radians, this is what we would get. And if we were to go from radians to degrees, this is what we'll get. So definitely want to keep this in mind um, as we continue um, with the class. Okay, let's look at another problem. All right, so here we see that we're being asked to solve um, solve for s, where s is the length of the arc. And so we know that theta equals sr. Um, and if we want to find s, you just multiply both sides by r. So you'll get that s is theta r. So let's say we want to find the length of each sector. So s equals theta r. So what does this mean for us? We're just going to plug in. Here we're told that theta is pi over 15 times r, which is 5. So this would be pi over 3 meters. Or we can actually solve this and you will get 1.05 meters. So that's going to be the length of S. Now for this problem in B, notice that your angle is in degrees. When we're using S equals um, theta R, you want to make sure theta is in um, radians. And so recall that to go from degrees to radians, we would multiply by pi over 180. So 150 degrees is going to be equal to 3, 5 pi over 6. And let me see, if we were to look at this here, you would see um, that 150 degrees is 5 pi over 6. So it would help if you guys were to study these. Actually, you're going to need to study this for your, um, your exam 4. Not exam 3, but exam 4. So let's plug this in. So S equals theta R. In this instance, our theta is 5 pi over 6. R is 2. So we have... This is going to be 5 pi over 3. Okay. I believe we just did this. So we actually. Do not need that. All right, so what we're going to look at now is um, something we call angular speed. Uh, we use it all the time, like when we drive and so on. I'm sorry, we're not at angular speed. I just saw the slide. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to recall now is um, area and circumference. So now to find the area of a circle, we know that's going to be... Um, pi r squared. And your circumference, so we just discussed this, is 2 pi r. So whenever we're finding um, so um, I'm sorry, so sometimes um, we may have to refer to what we call a central angle. And so your central angle is going to be the angle that's formed by two radii coming from your, um, your center of your circle. 
And so the central angle gives us quite a bit of um, partitions for our circle. So for instance, um, if we were to come here, my central angle is 80. Now the arc that is facing this measures the same as my central angle. Now it's important to note that this arc here is a proportion of the entire circumference. Specifically, it's the proportion of which 80 degrees is to 360 degrees. So here you will call this your um, minor arc. And the outside or the other portion would be our major arc. If we wanted to find, let's say, the degrees for the major arc, then we would subtract 80 from 360. So just to kind of reiterate, the arc length was that distance in between when I drew here. Your arc length is here, the distance in between your two radii from the, um, your circle. Now, let's say we wanted to find the measure or the arc length of the minor and major arcs. So I'm just gonna do uh, I'm just gonna do this figure here. I don't need that one. Okay, so if I wanted to find the length of the major arc, well, notice that, um, like I said before, this is a proportion of your circumference that is also um, equivalent to the proportion of your degrees to your um, 360. Since there's a complete 360 degrees that gives you, um, that's equal to your two pi r. So what we would do is, we would need to find the circumference of this entire circle. So we know that C equals two pi R, right? In this instance, R is 10. So this would be 20 pi. That's my circumference. So if I'm trying to find the length of the arc, notice that 90 degrees, over 360 times this entire um, circumference is the proportion of which the arc is of the circumference. Okay, so then I would simplify here. I think this is four. Well, really we could just say this is one fourth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is going to be, uh, I think I reduced that correctly. Pi over two. No, I don't think so. Let me just check this one more time. So this is going to be 90 over 360 times 20 pi. 90 is one fourth of 360. And this should be five. So it's going to be five pi. Okay, there we go. So the length of this would be five pi. We can also put it in numeric form. Um, you should be able to put this on your calculator. So five times pi is gonna be 15.7 roughly. So this means that the length of this arc is five pi 
um, or a quarter of the circumference, basically. Now the area of the sector, so when we talk about the sector, so let's redraw, you have your two, okay. So when we talk about the area of the sector, it's really talking about the space taken up by or your, um, your two red eyes when it cuts the circle. Um, so if you recall, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And so just like your length of your arc, the area of the sector is a portion of the area of your entire circle. And its proportion is equivalent to the proportion of the degrees of the angle or the central angle over the entire 360 degrees in a circle. So using this same um, diagram, we're going to find the area of the major arc. Or um, instead of doing the minor arc this time, we're going to do the major um, sector, the area of the major sector. So again, we know that A equals pi r squared. OK, so A equals pi r squared. So what this tells me, now I can plug in. So this is going to be pi times 10 squared or 100 pi. That's my area. So again, we know that 90 over 360 is going to be the proportion of which then 100 pi is going to be. Or it's going to be a portion, the same portion of the entire area. Um, oh, I said I was going to do the major arc. So to find the major sector, we would do 360 minus 90, right? And that should be 240, if memory serves, serves me correct, 270, there we go. So this would actually be 270 over 360 degrees. So I'm finding the area of this portion here. All right, so then um, 270 divided by 360, well, if 90 is 1 fourth, then we should expect that 270 is going to be 3 fourths of um, 360. So 4 goes into itself 1, and 4 goes into 100. Um, 25 times. So this is going to be 75 pi. Okay. Now we're going to talk about angular speed. So I kind of went ahead of myself earlier, but now we're going to look at um, angular speed. So we deal with angular speed when we like say drive or spin a wheel or something like that. So like say suppose um, a gear makes a full rotation every four minutes. We can calculate its angular speed as um, 360 degrees divided by four because it's 360 degrees per minute. It's making a full rotation every four seconds, sorry. So this means that um, for every nine, it's making 90 degrees uh, rotation. Well, not a full complete rotation, but it's going 90 degrees uh, per second. So we refer to the angular speed, um, the rate at which this thing is turning as your angular speed, and the speed at which the gear travels along the path of, the, the, of um, let's say, the road or whatever it is then that's going to be your linear speed. So there are two things that come into play when we talk about um, um, angular speed. You have your linear speed and your angular speed. Linear speed is 
how it travels along a linear path, and your angular speed is how it's rotating. So we can um, come up with a relationship between the linear speed and angular speed, which is going to be V, which is your linear speed, equals R, your radius, um, times omega, which is your angular speed. And here, omega is going to be theta over um, T. where t is your time, um, as seen here in this um, example. So let's say we have a problem here where it says each wheel in a bicycle is of radius 1.5 feet. If the wheels are making two revolutions per second, how fast is the bicycle moving along the road? So this here tells me that I'm looking for the linear speed because it's asking how fast is it going um, moving along the road. So recall that your angular speed that's going to be omega, right? And that's going to be what? It told us that it's doing two revolution per second, meaning it's doing two rotations um, per second. So this means it's gonna be doing two revolutions per second. Rem recall that this is equal to um, theta over T. All right, so in this instance, The revolution is 360, which is 2 pi radians. So it means that it's doing 4 pi revolution per second. OK. OK, now my velocity. or my V, I'm sorry, my angular speed, sorry, not velocity. This is your, not angular, linear speed. My linear speed is equal to R, which is my radius, times omega, which is my angular speed. Here they told us the radius was 1.5, and we just found that this is um, my angular speed is 4 pi. So that means this would be 4 times 1.5, which is 6. So that means my linear speed is 6 pi. And if I were to um, multiply this out, I would get 85 feet. Per second. Okay. Let's look at another example. Okay, so um, a water wheel is shown in figure 24, um, completes one rotation every five seconds. And we want to find the angular speed in radians. So again, angular speed is equal to theta divided by your time. And so in this instance, one rotation is a full complete thing. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by 5 because it's every 5 seconds. So this is going to be 1.256 radians over seconds. All 
Okay, so it says to complete one rotation, or passes to complete one rotation or passes through an angle of two pi radians in five seconds. Um, oh, whoops, <laughs> this is the answer. <laughs> well, it can say, so yeah, you, you can refer to it. So this would be your answer. <clears throat> All right. Now let's say we needed to find the linear speed. So a bicycle has wheels 28 inches in diameter. Um, a tetrometer determines the wheel. Um, the wheels are rotating at 180 revolutions per minute. Find the speed the bicycle is traveling down the road. Okay, so first thing, um, we're going to note that or angular speed, which we need to find our linear speed, um, that's going to be 180 times 2 pi. So 180 per minute times 2 pi. So this is going to be equal to, well, 180 times 2 is 360 radians per minute. Now, we need this to find our linear speed, which is equal to r times omega. r, well, they told us the diameter. If you guys recall, your diameter is twice your radius. So if we do 28 divided by 2, we'll get our radius, which is 14. So r is 14. And omega, this should be 360 pi, is 360 pi radians. And this is inches per minute. So if I multiply, I would get 5,040 pi inches per minute. But I want to call to your attention that we do not measure movements along the road um, as inches per minute. So we would need to convert this to miles per hour. And to convert this to miles per hour, do a little bit of conversions. So we have 5,040 pi inches per minute. So we need to find a way to relate miles and hour. Okay, so the first thing I would need to know um, where we can go from here, we can probably look at how many inches are in one feet. How many feet? Yeah, how many inches are in one feet? And so I would want my inches to cancel out. It's times here. So that goes at the bottom. And so it means that, well, one feet is um, 12 inches. Yeah. So I'm doing this so that that way this we know will cancel out. Um, oops, we're not there yet. <clears throat> now I need to relate feet. So the aim is to get to miles per hour. So maybe we can go from miles to hour to feet here. So hmm, we need feet at the bottom. So um miles so one mile is equal to 5280 feet okay so i can cancel feet and feet here 
Again, I need miles per hour. Here I have minutes. So I can just do, you know, that 60 minutes are in one hour. So that will cancel my minutes. There we go. So what do I have left? I have, I'm multiplying my top. Um, I have 5,040 pi times 60. On my bottom, I have 12 inches, well, that canceled, times 5280. And this would be miles per hour, because that's what's left. So that's going to be equal to 14.993 miles per hour. And that's my answer. Okay. So we will stop here for this lecture. Be sure to be on the lookout for your homework.